Oh, this is Jim McClanahan, W4JBM. Uh, this morning I talked a little bit about the Hewlett Packard 608D uh, signal generator that I was working on. And I wanted to, I, I really didn't expect to make another video. I've cleaned it up and uh, been working on it. Uh, there's a, a lubrication schedule um, that you're supposed to follow annually. And I've uh, been trying to clean it up and, and uh, get it going. And, and pretty close. Uh, but it's, this is such a mechanical marvel that I had to, uh, to make another video. Um, so for those of you that are familiar with superhets, uh, superheterodyne receivers, and one of the problems that you usually have with the simple ones is that the, uh, the front end and the local oscillator don't exactly track. They should always, like the front end should, the frequency that the front end is peaked on should be um, exactly offset from the local oscillator by the, the intermediate frequency, uh, like 455 kilohertz or something like that. Usually you can't get things exact and you just kind of have to make a compromise and that's good enough. Uh, sometimes there's a, a trimmer involved uh, so that you can peak the front end. So this, this is an oscillator uh, signal generator and it works kind of backwards in a way, but the main dial here uh, drives both a, uh, an oscillator and also a, uh, a filter stage. The filter stage doesn't necessarily track exactly, so there's this amplifier trimmer uh, to, to help deal with that. The way that's put in there, it, typically when you see some kind of trimmer, uh, it, it may be a separate capacitor or uh, it may be a variable resistor driving something like a Vericap or something like that in the, the stage. Uh, this one is handled mechanically and is pretty interesting. So if you look in the, the top, um, this is the um, the frequency dial here. There's three screws that normally hold it, two pins that uh, that make it so that it can only be positioned uh, where you want it. And if we look in here, there's two, th th this front one is the oscillator, and then this back one is the one, uh, this is basically the amplifier. And these are the two stages that you want to have track if possible. And when I tune the frequency, uh, you can't really tell the back one is, is turning, but they basically turn in sync. There's a pair of uh, worm gears in here. I don't know if uh, you can see that a little more light. There's a, a worm gear there and there's a worm gear there. So they turn in sync uh, with each other, driven by that, uh, that worm gear. So let's say we get to um, a particular frequency and we're, we're setting there, and now we want to uh, peak the, the uh, amplifier section. So that's this back section. That's driven by the back half of this worm gear. If you look at how the worm gear is actually put together, or the shaft that drives the worm gear, uh, there is a... Uh, let me get something to, uh, to point with here. Right in here, there's actually a slot with a screw in it, and the shaft also goes through uh, just a simple bearing there. This arm is connected to the, the trimmer portion. And what happens, I'm getting myself all tangled on this, but what happens as you adjust the trimmer, uh, it's this shaft here, and I'm adjusting it now. This, this other shaft over here is the main tuning dial. Um, but as I adjust the trimmer shaft, uh, it's screwing in and out of that block, which is in turn moving that arm forward and backwards. And that screw within the slot uh, limits its motion, but it's also what keeps gives it mechanical uh, continuity in when I'm I'm turning it uh, turning the frequency dial. Also, um, this part right in here is basically just a, uh, a pair of small arms over a bearing, and that bearing is uh, riding, so far as I can tell, just riding freely on the, uh, the shaft. Um, so it's pretty, pretty elegant, actually. There's not a separate capacitor for the peaking. Instead, once you tune to a frequency and, and you're there and you want to peak, uh, what you're doing is actually driving that back worm gear by either lengthening the shaft or like I'm doing now, uh, or reducing the length of the shaft like I'm doing now. Um, so that's just, that's, uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty dang incredible. Um, I did, I, I usually am a, uh, 
a proponent of being careful about not over lubricating. I have lubricated uh, this pretty extensively, even uh, some of the places where it says do not oil. I've put a drop in there. And at this point, uh, it's actually turning very smooth, no resistance at all. It was, it was kind of, uh, there was definitely some resistance earlier, um, made a huge difference. I basically kept oiling and greasing things until, uh, until I couldn't tell any additional difference. So the other thing I talked a little bit in the first video was the way they handle the attenuator. And down in here, if you see in that upper right hand corner, uh, you see that moving, I'm turning the front attenuator dial now. So to the left here uh, is the output of the amplifier. That's, that's the stage that we just peaked. That's the output of the amplifier. Here, the sensor head is basically as close as it gets, and attenuation is as low as it gets uh, for the signal source. As I increase attenuation, the signal head actually moves back down that slotted shaft and gets further and further away, and you'll see it backing. This is the, the signal head up in here uh, right now that's, that's coming out of the, the front of the slot. Um, as that gets further away, attenuation is increased, and the signal gets weaker and weaker. So again, this is, uh, I mentioned this morning in the video that uh, typically you, uh, you use resistors to do the attenuation. This is actually a mechanical attenuation that, that gets its attenuation by moving the, uh, the sensor forward and backwards. You can actually see on the back side there that coax cable moving uh, is one that goes into the back I don't know if that'll show up very good or not, but into the back um, and is connected to the uh, uh, the sensor. So anyway, I just, uh, I kind of found that fascinating and as much as anything, I wanted to uh, to make a video so that uh, I don't have to tear it all apart next time I want to uh, to take a look at how it, uh, how it works. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I always appreciate likes and subscribes. Have a great day.